This is Nathaniel Wills, and you're watching Crash Course in World History. Today we're going to talk about King Arthur Pendragon. Not the dragon-fighting king of United Britain, but the Welsh warlord with a troubled past. People from the 11th century monk Geoffrey of Monmouth to modern authors such as Mary Stuart and the writers of the BBC TV show Merlin have made the legends of King Arthur seem much more than they actually are. The tales of magic and swords that can tell the true king may or may not be legitimate, but they live on in the hearts of all who know King Arthur. King Arthur's story starts with his father, Uther. So Uther was the chieftain, the war chieftain of somewhere in Wales, and he went to a war council of the post-Roman tribal Britain, um, which was kind of like the UN, at the home of Gorlis, the king of Tintagel in the south of England. As they sat down to feast, Uther saw Gorlis's wife, Agrain. Uther immediately fell in love with her, and Merlin was very angry, because this was not the first time this, has ha this had happened. Uther made Merlin help him get a grain, um, but Merlin only agreed to join forces on one condition if Uther gave um, Merlin, Merlin his firstborn son. So naturally, Uther agreed, as it was just his firstborn son and heir to the throne, right? So Merlin changed Uther into Gorlis and, during a battle so that Uther could go and woo and grain. Meanwhile, Gorlis's forces were fighting against Uther's, and Gorlis was killed. Also, Grain and Gorlis had a child a while before um, named Morgana, but she's not very important yet. So, Uther was able to marry Grain since Gorlis was dead, and everyone was happy until Uther's firstborn son, Arthur, was born. So, Merlin took Arthur and gave him to a knight, Hector. And Uther died of sadness and left his sword in a stone, hence the sword in the stone. So years later, Hector and his son Sai and his adopted son Arthur journeyed to a tournament. Sai had forgotten his sword, so Arthur went and pulled a sword out of a stone and became the true king because it was the sword Caliburn, the um, sword of the Pendragons. A bunch of other knights tried to pull it out earlier, but they weren't. Since they weren't the true king, none of them could do it even if they had the strength of the Incredible Hulk. So, at his first battle of the River Glyne, Arthur became a man as he defeated his enemies and fought with valor. King Arthur had a lot of other battles, but the most notable is the Battle of Mount Baden. The Saxon King Aeli was invading, and Arthur's forces were hopelessly outnumbered, so Arthur gave them an ultra-motivational speech, and they killed all the Saxons. During the battle, um, Arthur's sword, Caliburn, broke, and so Merlin gave him, took him to a really special lake where an enchanted hand was sticking out of the water with another sword, and that was Excalibur. Merlin also gave him a scabbard that had spells on it so that if Arthur was wearing the scabbard, he would never be harmed in battle. So after a while, Arthur got depressed because the weight of his war clan was on his young shoulders, and poof! There appeared Guinevere, and they got married and fell in love. So they got a giant table for a wedding present, which was the round table. Before I go on to talk about the knights, let me tell you about their children. So in some myths, Arthur dies childless and alone. In others, dies, Arthur dies after all his children and dies with much sadness. His children include Amhar, who was killed by King Arthur in mysterious circumstances, um, Kefton, who was killed at the Battle of Camlan, Gwydre, who was killed by a giant boar, Claychu, um, who was killed by Sai, so Sai could take the ki glory of killing a dragon for himself. So on to the Knights of the Round Table. So different legends show from 12 to 150 knights. The most famous are Galahad, who found the Holy Grail, Bedivere, or Bedwer, who was with Arthur at the death of King Arthur, um, Sai, Hector's son, who killed... Um, Arthur's son for glory, and Gwain. So Sir Gwain, also known as Gwalchmi in the original Welsh, is my personal favorite. Gwain takes a challenge issued by the Green Knight and is so pure of heart that he is saved and saves the Green Knight from a spell. In some myths, Gwalchmi is the nephew of Arthur, which is also cool. Another famous knight of the round table is Lancelot. So Lancelot um, washed up on a beach and Arthur um, and Lancelot fought for a few hours to see like who was the better fighter, but neither of them was able to kill or defeat each other, so they were the same in strength, and everyone was happy for a while, and quests and stuff happened. So now, it is time for the secret compartment and the open letter. So, sorry secret compartment, um, this dagger 
represents death, as all daggers do. So, an open letter to Sir Kay, also known as Ector's son, Sai. Why did you kill one of Arthur's sons? Like, he killed a dragon, a poor innocent dragon, and that's how you kill the van. That's how you repay the vanquisher of a beast. Like, it's despicable though, that you'd kill poor innocent clay to just to have some more glory. Like, as it says in Pagur by some Welsh guy that you fought, Worthy Sai and Clay Chu used to fight battles before the pain of livid spears ended it. That's right, you killed Clay Chu, like, just so you could take glory. And there was a prophecy before you were born that your heart would be eternally cold. And it came true. So it's all thanks to you that Arthur lost another one of his sons. Sincerely, Nathaniel Wells. Meanwhile, Morgana, Igraine and Gorlis' daughter, was married to a lot of Orkney and had a son murdered. So Mordred went to Camelot as, at the same time as Lancelot and Guinevere, who were lovers, snuck out. Mordred overthrew Camelot and waged war on the Saxon king, um, with the Saxon king, Kedric, um, when Arthur was at his worst. He also stole an enchanted scabbard from Arthur, who was heartbroken and still had to worry about Lancelot's treachery. So he decided to go on after Lancelot first, who fled again, and then to fight one last time. So Kedric and Mordred's forces battled against King Arthur's at Cantland. Almost everyone died, and King Arthur was fatally wounded since he didn't have his magical scabbard. So he managed to put his sword through the skull of his nephew, Mordred, and as Arthur lay dying, his knights moved him to the lake where he got Excalibur. So Arthur told Bedwer, or Bedivere, to go and throw Excalibur back into the lake. Bedwer was ready to, um, to throw it back until he read the words on the blade, which said, Take me up. So he hid the sword and told Arthur that he had thrown it in. Arthur asked what had happened, and Bedwer said that the sword had splashed into the water. Arthur knew Bedivere was lying and told him to read the other side of the blade. On the other side of Excalibur, it said, Throw me back. As Bedwer threw it in, the Lady of the Lake's arm grabbed it, and it sank into the water. Bedivere returned to Arthur, but a boat with the body of the chieftain was drifting away. So, the end. Not all of this is real, of course. We know that there was a war chieftain in Wales who lived um, from 482 and 537 AD and was named Arthur, although he may have abdicated um, after the Battle of Camlan and gone to France to die in 562. So, according to myths and legends, Arthur united all of the free people of Britain, unless they were, wait for it, the Mongols, because they weren't even living in Britain. Although much of this story is probably fictional, it gave and still gives inspiration to generations worldwide. Thank you for watching, and as, it, as they say in our hometown, don't eat me.